Dear Heavenly Father, we're coming to you in the name of Jesus. We want to just thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to come together on your Sabbath day, Heavenly Father. Today you said to have a holy convocation so we can learn more, more about you, Heavenly Father. And as your word goes forth, Lord God, give us understanding, Lord God, not just to understand your word, Heavenly Father, but also to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 The title of the lesson is Jesus Came in the Volume of the Book. Jesus Came in the Volume of the Book. Because, you know, I was having... Especially this week, having a lot of conversations about who Jesus is. And, you know, a lot of people don't really understand that Jesus is actually the God of the Old and New Testament. Amen. And, like I said, so, it, because, you know, because now we understand the Father, the Father did tell Christ everything what to do when you read Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. But the point is, he was using Jesus because the Father said he's not going to deal with anything that's flesh. He's only dealing with spirit being. That's why he's going to come on the eighth day, which means new beginning. But Jesus is the only one that we've been dealing with from Genesis to Revelation. And we're going to go point that out. And like I said, we're going to show without a shadow of a doubt that's who we've been dealing with this whole entire time. And we will not meet the Father or see his face or hear his voice until he comes down on the eighth day. So let's go ahead and start this lesson off in Isaiah chapter 50. And we're going to read 1 through 6. Isaiah chapter 50. We're going to read 1 through 6. Isaiah chapter 50, 1 through 6. Isaiah chapter 50, 1 through 6. And when you get there, go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Mm -hmm. Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourselves. And for your transgression is your mother put away. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that I cannot redeem? Or have no, or have I no power to deliver? So he's telling you. So he's telling Israel. He said, "Look, for your iniquities have I." He said, "You sold your cells, and your transgressions were the reason why I divorced you." Mm -hmm. So he's telling. He said, "Wherefore I come, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer?" Is my hand short at all that I cannot redeem or have no power to deliver? Yes, he can. You know what I'm saying? He can do these things, but look, watch this. Behold, go ahead. Behold, in my rebuke, I dry up the sea. Mm -hmm. I make the rivers a wilderness. Mm. Their fish stinketh because there is no water and dieth the thirst. Mm -hmm. I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth their covering. He said, I clothe the heaven with blackness. That's why when you look up, that's why it's all black, because <coughs> he clothed it with blackness. But go ahead. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned. Now he's saying the Lord God has given him the tongue of the learned. Go ahead. That I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Mm -hmm. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as to learn. Mm. The Lord God hath opened, opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Mm -hmm. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Amen. So he's telling you, so this person, mm -hmm. now now this person right here is the one that he says, at my rebuke, I dry up the sea, I make the rivers a wilderness, their fish stink it because there is no water that they die for thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness and I make sackcloth their clover. So he's telling you, this person right here done this. So now, Jesus, huh? exactly, this is definitely talking about Jesus, exactly. Mm -hmm. But we see this is the Lord, though. Like verse 6, Cleet. I gave my back to smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off. off my beard. Amen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now we're going to go ahead and read that. Now we're going to go ahead and read that right now. Let's go to um, Matthew 26, 63 through 68. Mm. Wow. Matthew 26. 63 through 68. When you get there, go ahead. But Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Mm -hmm. and Jesus says unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall, see, shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. 
What further need have we of witnesses? Behold now, ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. Then did they spit in his face mm. and buffeted him, mm. and others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ. Who is he that smote thee? Right, so we see. So so they spit in his face, they buffeted him, which I mean they beat him, and then they smote him, they smacked him in the face. They did all these things where, where we just read in Isaiah chapter 50, where, but that was done unto the Lord, though. Like I said, that's, 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 that's who he's saying it was done to. That wasn't done to Isaiah. That was done to the Lord because he was letting you know because Isaiah can't clothe the heaven with blackness. He can't make the rivers Amen. dry up in the fish thing. Right. Only Isaiah can't do that. That's right. Now let's go ahead and go to uh, Psalms 40. Psalms 40. We're going to read 4 through 10. Psalms 40. We're going to read 4 through 10. Psalms 40. 4 through 10. Can you get there? Go ahead. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, are, Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to, to usward. Mm -hmm. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Mm. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou required. Hast thou not required? Hast thou not required? How, how thou, right. Hast thou not required? Mm. Go ahead. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Mm. I delight to do thy will. And what, oh, my what, God. What is his will? Go ahead. Yea, thy law is within my heart. That's, that's, that's the light of his will. That's why he said, I delight to do thy will, oh my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. We're going to read that later on, but go ahead and watch this. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Now, who is this that preached righteousness in the great, in the great congregation? That was Jesus. Mm -hmm. Remember, the great congregation was Israel. He preached that to them. And what else he did, what does he do? Lo, I have not refrained my lips. Mm -hmm. O Lord, thou knowest. <laughs> I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. From that great congregation is Israel. Mm -hmm. So now it's going to go in and get confirmation because the writer of Hebrews quoted this and let you know who was the one that came in the volume of the book. Let's go to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, we're going to read 1 through 13. Hebrews 10, 1 through 13. <clears throat> Hebrews 10, 1 through 13. When you get there, go ahead. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Now what law is this talking about right here in Hebrews chapter 10? Is this talking about the law of God or, the, or talking about the law of animal sacrifice? We're going to keep Animal sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Sacrifice. Amen. Watch this. Keep reading. But then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscious of sin. Mm -hmm. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. Mm -hmm. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. So we understand what law that was, the law that was sacrificed, because it says that it was not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should not take away sin. But look what he says right here. Watch this, verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world. And who is that he? Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offering and sacrifices for sins thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. <coughs> Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering, and burnt offerings and offering for sins thou wouldest not, neither there had it 
pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. And which were offered by the law. Now, what law is this again? And I'm a circle. Exactly. That's key because a lot of people look at it and they automatically just assume that's talking about God's royal law or law. Mm -hmm. Clearly, it's, it's not talking about that. But that's the one that keeps um, emphasizing that. But go ahead. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Now, this says he take away the first. That means the first covenant. Covenant. Mm -hmm. to, sacri to establish the what? Second, second covenant. Because covenant. Covenant. when you read in Exodus 24, 1 through 8, the first covenant was established by the blood of bulls and goats. But when you read Genesis, uh, Matthew uh, 26 and 26 and 28, the second covenant is established by the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that's how, that's how we keep going. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. That's, uh, when, I, when I look at We're this here, yeah, here go ahead. Yeah. when I look at this here, uh, those religious leaders at, at that time and stuff, they did not want the ushering in of the new covenant. Mm, okay. So that's why they wanted to, that's why when, when Jesus, that's why they were saying he was blaspheming by saying he was the son of God. And that's mm. when Jesus used to put them in the spirit and say, hey, if you knew Abraham, he knew Amen. me. He Amen. said, he said they, I, I'm spoken of and stuff. And, you know, Good point. and that's when they were up there, hey, you're not yet 50 years old. How can you say that you knew Abraham and all that, you know? Mm -hmm. So in a lot of ways and stuff, it was unbelief, but in a lot of ways mm. and stuff, it was Jesus was coming and tearing down, tearing down a a uh, no. a, a, a religious a religious uh, a powerhouse. So there it is. That's, yeah. what, they, That's they why Jesus was talking about putting old. You can't put new wine skin in the old wine skin. Amen. Right. Because it'll right. burst. It'll burst. And that's the thing about he was letting them know that what the new wine skin was letting him know. Like, look now, come believe on me now. You know, what mm. what I'm saying? that was something new to them. And they didn't understand that. So that's why that's what he was trying to let them know about dealing with the new wine and old right. wine skins. Exactly, it was like, look, it's changed now. Like, say, like believe on the Father, and also like because he tells us in um, what was I think is in John, John fifteen, or was John fourteen? John fourteen one. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, Amen. believe also in me. So he was letting them know, like, look, I'm I'm here. I'm the Messiah. I'm the one that you need to come. They didn't, like I said, it seemed like they didn't want to either receive it or, like you said, they probably didn't want to eat, not to come in. Mm -hmm. But it was clearly, they, if they searched the scriptures, they clearly would have known exactly. that he was the one they were talking about. We're, we're going to go through this lesson some more. Read uh, verses uh, 11, 11 to 13. Mm -hmm. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering, and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. Mm -hmm. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expect until his enemies be made his footstool. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see who was the one um, that he was referring to. Like he said, he's going to sit on the right hand of God and make his enemy his footstool. Let's go to uh, Psalms 110. Psalms 110, and we're going to read 1 through 4. So, Lord, Lord is sure, and he's precepting everything from the old and new. Amen, exactly, yes. right. That's what the Bible says, to the law and to the testimony. If no man speaks unto these things, that means there is no light in them. you got to have the law, which is the Old Testament, and the testimony, which is the new covenant. Because remember, it testifies of the old. you got to have both. have to have both. Like I said, it's, it's impossible to preach, this, to preach it without both. Exactly. Psalms 110. We're going to be 1 through 4. Psalms 110, 1 through 4. Can you get there? Go ahead. The Lord said unto my Lord. So who's the Lord? Because people try to say this was someone talking about, oh, the writer. It was uh, writing about David and the Messiah. It was the Father. I was like, no, 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 no. This is David writing this. And he's hearing the conversation. That's God. Right, from First the Father. Lord, in capital. Amen. Exactly. Oh, that's that's the Father. Too. Amen. Exactly. And the Father is saying to my Lord, which is who? Christ. Christ. To do what? Sit thou at my right hand. Until I make thy enemy thy footstool. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. And the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. Mm -hmm. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Amen. So now let's go ahead and go to Matthew 12. Because I'm going to show you where uh, where Jesus says that um, 
who his family is, and those and those are the ones that do the will, that do the will of the Father. Amen. And we just read when he said in Psalms 40, uh, he said, "I'd like to do thy will, yea, the laws in my heart." So he's letting you know his will was to do the law of God, and that should also be our will as well if we're if we, if we want to be in the family. They said to, to be adopted to the God family. We also have to uh, be obedient and keep his commandments. Matthew 12, we're going to read 46 through 50. Matthew 12, 46 through 50. When you get there, go ahead. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brother stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother, mm. and who are my brethren? Mm -hmm. And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples, and said, Behold, my mother and my brother. He said he stretched forth his hands to her. His who? Disciples. His disciples. And he said, Behold, my mother and my brother. And what else? For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Amen. Amen. So he's just telling you. So like you said, remember in Psalms 40, he says, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, the law is within my heart. So it's telling you what his will is. And that's to keep his commandments. Amen. Now let's go ahead and go to Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48, we're going to read 11 through 16. When you get there, go ahead. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give, give my glory unto another. Mm -hmm. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel. So he's saying, listen unto me, Jacob and Israel, that what? And Israel my call. Mm -hmm. I am he. Mm. I am the first. I also am the last. Mm. My hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth. So his land, his hand, he laid the foundation of the earth. What else he do? And my right hand hath spanned the heaven. Mm. When I call unto them, they stand up together. Mm -hmm. All ye assemble yourselves and hear, which among them hath declared these, which among them hath declared these things. Mm -hmm. The Lord hath loved him. He will do his pleasure on Babylon, and his arm shall be on the Chaldean. I, even I, have spoken. Yea, I have called him. I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Mm -hmm. Come ye near unto me. Hear ye this. Now watch this. He says, come ye near unto me. Hear ye this. Look at this. Watch what we're going to say. Go ahead. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. Mm -hmm. From the time that it was, there am I. Mm. And now the Lord God and his spirit have sent me. Whoa. So now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. Well, now this person who was sent said, Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel my call. I am he. I am the first, and I am also in the last. My hand also laid the foundation of the earth. My right hand has spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. So he's telling you, this person, all of this now, he's sent by somebody? Like who, who who can send who can send someone who laid the foundations of the world who says they are the first and the last the father and we're gonna go and read that let's go let's go to John five John five we're gonna read thirty six to forty seven John five thirty six what are they barking. Mm -hmm. oh. 36 to 47. John 5, 36 to 47. When you get there, go ahead. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. That the Father, remember, 
He said, the Lord God, the Spirit has sent me. He's telling you, he's the one that was sent. Because he's the one that's the first and the last and laid the foundation of the world and did all that. He's saying that he was sent. But can you read it? Watch this. And the Father himself, which has sent me, mm -hmm. has borne witness of me. Ye have neither <coughs> heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. He said, you have neither heard his voice at what? Any time, nor seen his shape. What else? And ye have not, let's see, and ye have not his word abiding in you. Mm -hmm. For whom he has sent, him ye believe not. Mm. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. But what? And they are the, and they are they which testify of me. Mm -hmm. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men. But I know, but I know ye, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. Mm. If, in, if another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Mm -hmm. How can ye believe which ye receive honor one of another? And seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. Mm -hmm. For had you believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my word? Amen. Because like I said, because right, because Moses, Moses spoke of him. Like you can read about him in Numbers 24, Deuteronomy 18. Like he, he wrote of the Messiah coming. Mm -hmm. So now let's go ahead and go now to uh, Isaiah 11. <laughs> Isaiah 11, we're going to read 1 through 10. What's that just, to me, that just seemed like that was just, just, that they, those those religious leaders, mm -hmm. they they wanted to be in darkness. Yeah, because of Because if they truly were searching the scriptures, they would know his stuff, even if they didn't believe in Christ. They said, well, now he, the scriptures do speak of one. Bingo. Coming. There you, you go. Know, so that's, 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 mm -hmm. I don't understand that. What, um, can you explain um, verse 45 in John? Um, it says, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you. That's mm -hmm. Moses, right? Oh, he's saying, he's saying Moses. Yeah. Or he said, Moses, right, because remember, because right. of the writings of him. The writings of of. of, of of Christ, look, the writings of Christ in, in 5, 45, in 45, where he's saying that he said, like, he says, um, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accused you, even Moses, in whom he trusts. So it's like, do not oh, think, so, so he like, I don't have to accuse you to the Father. He said, the one that you so-called believe in Moses, who you trust, if you trust him so much, how is that you don't even believe my words? Like, oh. you don't believe my words or believe him, but he said he... But when you read through Moses' right, it wrote of him. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's what he was saying. So when he said even Moses, he yeah. was just saying, oh, he was listening, You're right. listening Moses. Exactly, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Let's go to Isaiah 11, 1 through 10. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 11, 1 through 10. Isaiah 11, 1 through 10. Go ahead. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, mm -hmm. and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And now we know who that rod is out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Who was that? That's Lord. Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus. We're going to keep reading. Watch this. Go ahead. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. We're going to read that later on, where Jesus, Jesus is going to quote. See, we're going to say, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's going to quote that, but see, mm -hmm. you see Isaiah, he also says it here. He also going to say it in Isaiah 61 as well, but keep reading. The Spirit of counsel and might, mm -hmm. the Spirit of knowledge and of the Spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with the righteousness shall he judge the poor, mm -hmm. and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Mm -hmm. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Mm -hmm. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, 
and the leper shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fat one together, and the child shall lead them. Go to verse 9, 9 and 10. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, mm -hmm. for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Mm -hmm. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse. A root of Jesse. Go ahead. We shall stand for an ensign a banner of the people. Of the people. Mm -hmm. Amen. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Right. He said in that day there should be a root. Of Jesse, like it's amazing how people say, "Well, you know that root is a uh, is a uh, David brother." When we know that David's offspring, Jesse's offspring, not his root, exactly. that's his offspring. But we know that Christ is the root because he was before Jesse and David. Now let's go to Isaiah sixty-one. Isaiah sixty-one, we're gonna read verse one and two. Isaiah sixty-one, we're gonna read verses one and two. Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. Go ahead. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. That's the gospel, good tidings to the meek. Go ahead. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to mm -hmm. proclaim liberty to the captives. And who are the ones that are captives? The children of Israel. Yeah, the children of Israel. Yeah, we, we, but why are we captive, though? Because of our breaking his law, statutes, and commandments. Amen, there you go. Amen, go ahead. And the opening of the prison... To them that are bound. Because we were all bound in that prison. Like I said, because like I said, we were all under the penalty of the law, which is the what? Second death is the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. But God, but now he redeemed us so that we don't no longer have to go to the lake of fire as long as we believe believe in him and keep his commandments. But go ahead. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To comfort all that mourn. So now we're going to go ahead and read this now because see, Jesus, Jesus quoted this. For a reason. Let's go to Luke 4. Luke 4. Luke 4, 14 through 21. Luke 4. 14 through 21. Luke 4, 14 through 21. When you get there, go ahead. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region and region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Mm -hmm. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. As his custom was, he went into the synagogue on, on the first day. The <laughs> Sabbath day. Oh, no, not the first day. Wait, not Sunday? No, the Sabbath day. Oh, okay. And, and what did he do when he went in there? And stood Who, up. Hooping out. <laughs> <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't doing that? <laughs> oh, down. okay. He came with that to read. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Which is the same thing as Isaiah. Go ahead. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, mm. because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm -hmm. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives mm. and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Mm. All bound. Mm -hmm. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Mm. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Mm. And he began to say unto them, This day... Is is this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears? See, he fulfilled uh, Isaiah sixty one, mm -hmm. verse one and two, but you know, but when you read the rest, he didn't fulfill that. See, he won't fulfill the rest of um, Isaiah sixty one until he returns, because it talks about how the Gentiles going to <laughs> how they're going to be in servitude. Like when you read when you read all of Isaiah sixty one from verses one through eleven, he fulfilled verse one and two, but the rest you got to read because he. he because like I said, he's going to put us on top and the Gentiles are going to be our servants. And they're going to, uh, be, um, that's why he says, for your shame, I'm going to give you double. Like, you got to read it, though. But he just fulfilled that part, though. Mm -hmm. That's why That's why he had to stop and close the book. He couldn't keep reading because if he had kept reading, that would have been showing the restoration of Israel. And he couldn't keep reading. That's why he had to stop there. 
because when you keep reading Isaiah 61, that's, talk, that's about the, from verse 3 down, 3 through 11, that's his second coming. And that's when we'll be, that's when we'll be uh, restored and we'll be in our land. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's why it says, The strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall build up your plowmen and your vine dressers. Like, strangers are all going to be doing all this stuff for you because you did all this hard work, Israel, so now you're going to relax and everyone's going to do things for you now. But he had to close the book at verse 2 because he didn't fulfill that part yet. He only fulfilled by just, you know, um, so he, that we're able to receive he salvation. He fulfilled it by being on the scene and stuff and, 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 and ushering in the new covenant. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, but the rest of them, verses That's 3 to 11. Prophecy. Yeah, 3 to 11 is future prophecy, exactly. Amen. Now let's go ahead and go to Zechariah 12. Zechariah 12. See, Jesus knew, like I said, because Jesus, if Jesus would have kept reading, then he would have been in error. You know what I'm saying? That's why he knew the key. That's why he shut the book then. That's why he said, this has been fulfilled in your ears. Like, look, okay, this has been fulfilled, but he couldn't have kept reading because they were like, hold on, we're, we're waiting on that, on that Messiah person. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was declaring, I am the one that you that, lived. That's exactly he was. One, exactly. That, that is, but remember, we were, being, we were ostracized by the Romans, so we wanted a Messiah to get us out of our situation. So there was, yeah, but he didn't understand. He had to get us out of our situation spiritually first before we can do it physically. And, and see, that's they, what they were looking from the outward. There and they were go. looking at us and man, because they were looking, like they said, they were looking for somebody to come probably on a white horse with yeah. great power. I mean, yeah, no, yeah, military, exa but, yeah, exactly. Like, 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 like how, how he going to come to second Like he's going to come to second yeah, yeah, Amen, exactly. Yeah. But he had to come. Like I said, if they read Isaiah 53, they read Daniel chapter 9, they read Zechariah chapter 9, they would know that he, uh, you know, uh, uh, that he had to do those things, but you know, like I said, are they are they actually are they actually reading? But that's human nature. When people when people been oppressed and stuff like that, they're looking for uh, for someone to, to to deliver them with a strong hand. That's what Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Good point. Mm -hmm. Amen. Zechariah twelve ten through fourteen. Go ahead. And the land shall mourn. No, Zechariah twelve ten through fourteen. Oh, ten. And I will. Pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace. The and spirit of grace. So that's what Jesus came. Mm -hmm. Jesus came. He brought the spirit of grace now, mm -hmm. and that's important because you, know, you can also you can read that. Like I said, we see that example as far as Mary Magdalene in John eight, when she should have gotten stoned, you know, mm -hmm. like that, because you know the punishment was when you committed sin, you should have gotten stoned. But he poured out the spirit of grace, whereas now. Judgment no longer belongs to the hands of man now. Like I said, the man can't. That's why, like I said, you know, when people say, well, if we're not breaking the Sabbath, you guys keep it alone, then why, why are we being stoned and stuff right now? Because cause that's going to happen at the judgment day. Go ahead. That's what I like with people and stuff where they sitting up there and stuff and be talking about, well, I don't see anything so important about, man, about keeping the Sabbath, about you, you going and stuff instead of you being stoned and stuff or going on your jobs mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. And stuff yeah. Like that because we are under the dispensation of grace. grace. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Yeah. So he's just allowing us to get it together. He's mm -hmm. not allowing you to continue to keep in sin. He said, that's why he says, you know, uh, he says, uh, now should we continue in sin now that grace abound? God, God forbid. forbid. Of course Amen. not. You don't continue in sin. What was that post uh, uh, that he read? What is this? Jesus died. No, no. Continue it's in sin, sin because Jesus died so that you can be on the grace or something yeah. like that it was saying, but like, it's okay to keep sinning. You know, you're like, what? Like, it's okay to keep sinning because Jesus died for you for you to do that. I was like, yo, you said that thing had to be sarcastic mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, for, it had to be sarcastic. For someone. I, we're going to hope that they would. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, that's ignorant. That's ignorant. Yeah, like they're helping Jesus out. I'm going to sin so that grace can abide. Thank you. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Right. And so, yeah, but go ahead, though. Go ahead. In the spirit of grace and of supplication, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourner for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Mm -hmm. And that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem as the mourning of Hadadramon in the valley of Megiddo. Now, wasn't there a great mourning in, that, in Jerusalem when Jesus died? Because remember, this is talking about when Jesus he talks about, he said, they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, mm -hmm. and they shall mourn for him as one mourner for his only son, and they shall be the bitterness of him as that is the bitterness of his firstborn. And in that day, there should be a great mourning in where? Jerusalem, where Christ was killed, as the mourning of Herodotam in the valley of Megadon. Well, watch this. Look at verse 12. Go ahead. And the land shall mourn. And the land shall mourn. What else? Every family apart. Every family apart. 
the family of the house of David. Now we see that when you look at uh, uh what's name Joseph is from the house of David. He didn't he mourned apart. Go ahead. And their wives apart. And their wives apart. The family of the house of Nathan. And the apart. family now who's Nathan? That's Nathan was from Mary. When you look at Leviticus uh, um, Luke three's lineage, that's talking about Mary's lineage. She's from Nathan. She mourned apart. That's why she didn't mourn with her husband. When, when, when they died, Jules, Joseph wasn't there. She mourned and also keep reading. And their wives apart. Who else? The family of the house of Levi. The family of the house of Levi and their wives apart. Levi was dealing with Elizabeth and Zacharias. You know what I'm saying? They mourned apart. But those are the house of Levi. What else? The family of Shemai mm -hmm. apart and their wives apart. Mm -hmm. And all the families that remain, every family apart and their wives apart. Right. So they all mourned apart when Christ died, when he died there. That's what this is talking about. They all wow. mourned apart. They all mourned apart right there. So now we're going to go and get confirmation to show that verse of Zechariah 12 and 10 was dealing with Christ. Let's go to John 19. John 19, we're going to read 13, I mean 33 through 37. John 19, we're going to read 33 through 37. saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, mm. and forthwith came there out blood and water. Mm -hmm. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he said true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture could be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. A bone of him shall not be broken. Right, now it's Exodus 12, 46. Because, you know, remember, you couldn't break the bone of the Passover of the lamb. You couldn't do that. Go ahead, what else? And again, another scripture said, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Amen. We realize that was Christ. Give one more confirmation real quick. Let's go to Revelation 1, 7, and 8. Revelation chapter 1, we're going to read 7 and 8. Revelation chapter 1, 7 and 8. When you get there, go ahead. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also with which pierce him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Mm -hmm. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Now, in fact, read, um, read 14 and uh, 15. Mm -hmm. Read 14 and 15. His head and his hairs were like white like snow. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, white like wool. Whip, like wool. Mm -hmm. And as white as snow. Mm -hmm. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his Feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Amen, amen. So now let's go and go to Daniel seven. Now, cause remember he said that um, he said, "Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and all that which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him." Even so, amen. So he said he's gonna be coming with clouds. Let's go and read that. Let's go to Daniel seven. Daniel 7, we're going to read 9 through 14. Daniel 7, 9 through 14. Go ahead. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, mm -hmm. whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. So we see that Jesus got hair like lamb's wool. And the father also has hair like lamb's wool. 
Like I said, they, they that's got, referring to the Father when it says ancient yeah, of days. Yeah, that's ancient days. Yeah, ancient of days is God. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the Father right there. But you see how he looked. He got he got he got that all white hair too. Like Lamb with the boy. He he read it. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Mm -hmm. A fiery uh, stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands, thousand thousands ministered unto him. And ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. So when you see this, is also the great right throne judgment here Amen. too. But that's also that's just in Daniel. But we also can read the same thing in Revelation twelve. I mean, Revelation chapter twenty, eleven through fifteen. But go ahead. I beheld then because of the voice of the great word, which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed, and eat and given to the burning flame. Mm -hmm. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. Mm -hmm. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds you of heaven. Did you read that? Mm -hmm. Come with the clouds of heaven. What else? And came to see, came to the Ancient of Days. Who, so we see in the vision one like the Son of Man. Who was the one like the Son of Man? And he came unto the angel of days. And who was that? The Father. Amen. Father. Exactly. That's two separate people, though. Right? Amen. They ain't the same. That's two separate. But go ahead. Amen. And they brought him near before him. Mm -hmm. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Mm. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Amen. Amen. So now let's go ahead and go to Deuteronomy 18 now. Because remember he said, because Moses also spoke spoke of uh, Christ. Come in. Let's go ahead and read Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19. Christ will see all through the book. All through Again it. Again to the end. Again into the end. <laughs> Just had to read it with some understanding. That's all. Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19. When you get there, go ahead. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brother, and like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. Mm -hmm. According to all that thou desiredest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, mm -hmm. like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Amen. So he's letting you know. So, okay, so they said, you didn't want to hear God speaking? Moses said, all right, I'm going to raise up. Now, people try to say this is talking about Joshua. Like, why would he even talk about Joshua when Joshua was already there? Like, he was already in the presence of all this. So you know he wouldn't be talking about Joshua, which doesn't make any sense. And Joshua didn't get his command until Moses had passed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but it'd be, some crazy I mean, it'd be some crazy stuff telling you. Yeah. So now let's go ahead and go to um, Luke 24. And just read one verse, 19. Luke 24. And just one verse, 19. That's people whose eyes are just closed, man. Luke 24, one verse. verse that's, what look, that's what you just preached on last week and stuff. Those, those that are saying that they were called by God and God have not called. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Amen. Luke 24, one verse, 19. Go ahead. And he said unto them, what thing? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. Right, because they realized he was that prophet that, that Moses was talking about. Watch this again. Let's go to John 7. John 7, 37 through 40. John 7, 37 through 40. John 7, 37 through 40. John 7, 37 to 40. Go ahead. 
Then the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Mm -hmm. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said of a, of a truth, this is the prophet. Right. So they understood. So they understood, who, right, this is the truth. Like, oh, this is that prophet that Moses was talking about. Amen. This is him. Amen. More confirmation. Acts 3, 20-22. They just got cut off on the paper. But Acts 3, 20-22. Everything in the book, it lines up, man. It all has to line up together. Acts 3, 20-22. When you get there, go ahead. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, mm -hmm. which God hath spoken by the mouth, of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Read 23. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Mm -hmm. We understand that's Jesus. So now, let's go ahead and go to John 1, 18. John 1, 18. Because a lot of people think that this right here is a contradiction in the Bible right here, this, this passage, but it's not. John 1, 18. John 1, 18. When you get there, go ahead. No man has seen God at any time. Mm -hmm. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Right. So he's telling you. He has made him known. So we say, look, no man has seen God at any time. Right? Semicolon. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So he made him known. So, the like I said, we haven't seen the Father, but we're going to see. Because it says no man has seen God at any time. So we're going to go. Now let's go to Exodus 24, 9 through 11, and say, who was this person that, who was it that they saw then? Exodus 24, 9 through 11. Exodus 24, 9 through 11. The Bible said, no man has seen God at any time. Well, who do these people see? What, what is it? Uh, people are trying to contradict that, that. Some people are trying to say that man has seen God. Right. Yeah, but see, no one's seen the Father. Because Jesus, yeah, right. Jesus said, you have never seen the Father any time nor heard his voice. He said that on multiple occasions. He said that on John 5, John mm -hmm. 6. Now. So we're going to see who was this person that they actually saw in Exodus 24, 9 through 11, if no man has seen God at any time. Remember, no man has seen the Father. Amen. But go ahead, Exodus 24, 9 through 11. Go ahead. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, mm -hmm. and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. Mm. And there was under his feet as it were paved work of the sapphire stone, and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. Mm -hmm. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. And did eat and drink. But who was it that they saw? Like I said, it wasn't the Father. But we know that this person, the, the God that they saw was Christ. As a matter of fact, put this in your notes. Go to Colossians 1. And just read 1 through 16. No, 1 through 17. Colossians 1. 14 through 17. Go ahead. 
I'll read it. I'll read it. He says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God. See, Christ is the image of the invisible God, because we haven't seen the Father. The firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible, invisible, where things, he said, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And this is before all things. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. So we see that Jesus is the image of the invisible God because we haven't seen the Father. We've only seen uh, the uh, the, the uh, only begotten Son from his bosom, which was Christ, which is Christ, not the Father. Now let's go ahead and go to, huh? Oh, yeah, Colossians 1, 14 through seventeen. That was just something just to put on there for your side note to let you know that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. That's who they saw. That's all I was showing you. Um, Genesis fourteen. Genesis 14. Genesis 14, we're going to read 17 through 20. When you get there, go ahead. Genesis 14, 17 through 20. Abigail, you got to go search every day. It's too much, yeah. Go ahead. Genesis 14, 17 through 20. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his Return from the slaughter of Shedelomer. Go ahead. Uh -huh. And of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shevet, which is the king Dale, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine of the Most High God. Okay, so yeah. Well, 17 through 20? Is that what you read? Keep reading. I'm still reading. Priest 8, you got to read 19 20. 19 20. And he blessed him. And said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Amen. So who was this Melchizedek, also the king of Salem? That's Christ. Right? That's also Christ, exactly. So now we're going to show... And that's, isn't that amazing? Back in Abraham's time and stuff, he was keeping the will of God. And that he was tithing to him. Amen. To exactly. That is deep. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now it's going to go to Genesis uh, 17, 1 through 4. Genesis 17, 1 through 4. Go ahead. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Mm. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Amen. 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 So it says, right, so it says, and when the Ab Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham, right? So now we got to see. Let's go to John 8 now. Let's go to John 8. We're going to read 48 through 58. Because we see that God appeared unto Abraham when he was Melchizedek, and he also appeared unto him then as well, we just read. But we're going to see who that was that appeared unto him. John 8, 48 through 58. John 8, 48 through 58. And when you get there, go ahead. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judges. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Mm -hmm. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou, and the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. 
Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are and the prophets are dead, whom makest thou thyself? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. <laughs> I'm going to be a liar like you. You called him out. Go ahead. <laughs> but I know him mm -hmm. and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Remember, because see, he's talking about, well, you'll see. Go ahead. Keep reading. Go ahead. Then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old yet yet 50 years old and hast thou seen abraham jesus said unto them verily verily i say unto you before abraham was i am so he stated his deity as it was in exodus three fourteen. remember when Jesus, when moses said who should i say that sent me tell them he says i am that i am that sent you that i am that he, he's stating that's stating his deity right mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. he literally you know yeah that was cool how Jesus told him and stuff and said it. And then in, in that day, he said, uh, Abraham rejoiced to see me. Yeah. Because what it was, he was he was happy to see me because during that time, Abraham was fighting battles. Hey, and man. And he came okay. and stuff, and he was grateful and stuff. He knew that was the Ooh. Lord that was on his side. And he died yeah, to that's the deep. Lord. Yeah. He, he blessed that was. the Lord. Amen. He, was, he, was, he knew Amen. that it was by, 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 the, by the Lord's hand that he had his Amen. victories. And Amen. Stuff. Good point. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yep, exactly. But he let you know he he was around way before uh before Abraham. Exactly. That's what he said. That's why he said before Abraham was I am. I am. And then look what they got mad. Look read verse uh, fifty nine. Then took they up stones to cast at <laughs> him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. See, in accordance with the law, that's in Leviticus twenty four sixteen, the religious leaders were ready to stone Christ for claiming to be God. They well understood what Jesus was claiming, and that's why I said that's why they didn't want to believe him. So they charged him with blasphemy, because you know in twenty, you know Leviticus twenty four sixteen says, um, let's see, Leviticus twenty four sixteen. It says, and he that blasphemy the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall surely stone him, as well as a stranger, as he that is born in the land. When he blasphemed in the name of the Lord, shall be put to death. So they thought he was blaspheming the Lord when he's saying that, but not understanding that is him. He is the Lord. But they just they said, "Oh, well, we got to kill him because they say you're blaspheming," and he's not. He was he was being real. And so no, he was not yet fifty. See, right, exactly. That's what threw him off. You're not yet right, 50. right. You know, I was like, you thirty something years old. You talking like this? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Isaiah thirty-three. Isaiah thirty-three. Read to read verse 22. Isaiah 33. We're going to read verse 22. Go ahead, Isaiah 33 and 22. For the Lord is our judge. He's our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. He's our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. And he is our king. He will save us. And he will save us. So yeah. now we got to see who is our, because it said, for the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, and the Lord is our king. He will save us. But we're going to see, according to the scriptures, who's our judge, who's our lawgiver, and who is our king. We're going to let the Bible speak. Let's go to John 5. See here, I got on those, all three of those. We had a capital L O R D. The Lord is our judge. Well, none. Well, yeah, I know it is capital, but not not in this instance. Though you don't want to use that on this incident because we're yeah. gonna we're gonna prove that this is talking about Christ, not the oh, Father. We're gonna okay. prove that. Yeah, we're gonna prove it right now. Yeah. Well, I see what you're saying because it's all caps. Yeah, but no, I would. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I understand. But no, this is this is clearly. You know, you're, okay. you're, you're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna see. Oh, okay. Yeah, John five. We're gonna okay. Now we're gonna deal with the. Um, with the judge, right? Because it said he's our judge, our lawgiver, and our king. So we're going to see who is our who is the one that's going to judge. We're going to read that. John 5. 21 through 23. 
John 5, 21 through 23. When you get there, go ahead. For as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Mm -hmm. For the Father judges no man, but have committed all judgment unto the Son, mm -hmm. that all men should honor the Father, I'm sorry, honor the Son, mm -hmm. even as they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son, honors not the Father which has sent him. Amen. So now let's go ahead and go. So we see that the Father gave all judgment to who? To the, to son. the son. Okay. Mm -hmm. to but to if these guys were studying scripture, they, they knew someone was coming, like but they, it was just like they refused to accept the fact that he was the Messiah. Amen. That's wow. it. That's it. You're right. Let's go to uh, dealing with our judge still. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. One verse. There's a lot of these Israelites that don't even go to the New Testament, don't they? Yes, a lot of them. Yeah, Torah only Israelites. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what they are. Mm -hmm. That's why they can come up with all these concoctions. Oh, that's David. Yeah, like everything David. Like what? <laughs> like okay, yeah, come they're on. Making up stuff. Yeah, they're, they're making up make stuff. Stuff makes sense in their mind. And they, there you go. In their mind. You said Second Corinthians. Yeah, Second Corinthians five ten. It's it's real small. It's uh, I put it on. It's you can't really hardly see it though. It's real small. Second Corinthians five verse ten. One verse. Go ahead. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, mm -hmm. that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Amen. Amen. So we see the sit on the judgment seat of Christ. So now, what's the other one? It says dealing with the lawgiver, right? Because it says the Lord, our God, he's our judge, he's our lawgiver, and our king. Well, we're going to see who's also the lawgiver. Let's go to Genesis 49 and 10. Genesis 49, we're going to read verse 10. Genesis 49, verse 10. When you get there, go ahead. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, mm -hmm. nor a lawgiver from between his feet until mm -hmm. Shiloh comes. And who is Shiloh? Christ. Jesus. That's he. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And unto him shall the, peace, shall the gathering of the people be. Right, because remember, when he comes, he's going to be the one to gather us, right? The gathering of the people will mm -hmm. be. But it said that the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Let's go to Psalms 108, verse 8. One verse. Psalms 108, verse 8. Psalms 108, verse 8. When you get there, go ahead. Gilead is mine. Uh -huh. Manasseh is mine. Mm. Ephraim, is, Ephraim also is the strength of my head. Mm -hmm. Judah is my lawgiver. But Judah is the lawgiver. We're going to see who that is. We're going to see who that line of Judah is. Amen. Let's go. <laughs> Revelation 5. Revelation 5, 1 through 5. Revelation 5, 1 through 5. Revelation chapter 5, 1 through 5. Can you get there? Go ahead. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, and on the backside a seal with seven seals. Mm -hmm. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is, who is worthy to open the book? and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Mm -hmm. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, mm. the root. Of David mm -hmm. hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So we're gonna see who was that who was that lion of the tribe of Judah or that root of David. One verse, Revelation twenty two and sixteen. 
So we're going to see who that lawgiver was. He said Judah was his lawgiver. We're going to see who it was. The line of Judah, the root of David. One verse, Revelation 22 and 16. Revelation 22 and 16. When you get there, go ahead. I, Jesus. I, who? I, Jesus. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Have sent my angel to testify unto you these mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Amen. 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 So that's like, you know, so we see that Jesus is our judge. We see that he's all, he was the lawgiver. And we, now we're going to see who was the king, right? Because he said, uh, uh, um, it says, for the Lord is our lawgiver. He says, the Lord is our judge, our lawgiver, and our king. He will save us. Mm -hmm. Now let's see who our king is. Let's go to Revelation 19, 11 through 16. Revelation 19, 11 through 16. When you get there, go ahead. Revelation 19, 11 through 16. Go ahead. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he sat upon him, he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Mm -hmm. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Mm -hmm. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And who was called the Word of God? In the Jesus. beginning was the Word. The, the Word. word. Amen. 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 Go ahead. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, mm -hmm. white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepresses of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. 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 King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Let's go to Zechariah 9. Zechariah 9. Zechariah 9. We're going to read 9 and 11. Zechariah 9, we're going to read 9 and 11. Zechariah chapter 9, we're going to read verses 9 and 11. Go ahead. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Mm -hmm. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just. It says he is just. That means he is righteous. What else? What else? And has his salvation. Uh huh. Lowly. He's lowly. He said he's humble. Mm -hmm. What else? And riding upon an ass. Mm -hmm. And upon a coat, the foal of an ass. And look what he did when he got here. What, what he had to do? Look at verse eleven. Go ahead. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Amen. Amen. So by his blood of the covenant, by him shedding his blood. He set forth the prison. Remember, we were all in prison under under the penalty of the law. Now he set us free. Praise mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. So now we see that. Let's go ahead and get confirmation to show that was him. Matthew 21, 1 through 5. Because when I ask people, like, well, who was this? Well, you know, bro, that was Solomon. That was, I said, Solomon? Like, how was this Solomon way back in Zechariah? You talk, that's like a thousand years later. You talking about Solomon? <laughs> like, what? Like, I'd be like, man, y'all are coming up with answers, boy. I'd be like, man, come on. This, if you don't even know, just don't even speak, man. Because you make yourself look even crazy when you speak. Matthew 21, 1 through 5. We're going to show that Christ fulfills Zechariah 9 and 9 right here. Matthew 1, 1 through 5. Go ahead. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, mm -hmm. unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway, you shall find an ass tied mm. and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any, if any man say un say aught unto you, you shall say the Lord hath need of them. Mm -hmm. And straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye, the daughter of Zion, behold. Thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a coat, 
the foe of an ass. Amen. Clearly talking about Christ. So, I mean, he's our king. So we see when we read um, Isaiah 33, when we read Isaiah 33 and 22, clearly we see that when it says, it says, for the Lord is our judge. We saw that Christ is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. We saw that Christ was the lawgiver. And then the Lord is our king. We see that Christ is our king. He will save us. So we see that, right? Mm -hmm. So now, let's go ahead and go to Acts 1. Acts 1. So we're going to read 6 through 12. Question we'll for you. Yeah, during, yeah, go ahead. during that time, so the Pharisees, they were considered the religious, the, the religious leaders. The scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees. Uh -huh. Those three. But the I lawyers, imagine, also lawyers, I imagine right? some of the common people, I wonder, did they have access, I guess, to scripture? Or either, but they would just go well, to the synagogue. They were going to, but they were listening to them read. That's yeah, why they, they all, that's that's why they why all they messed, messed up. up. There you go. They were all messed because up. Because it's, it's just from, like they was taking whatever they were there saying. There you go. So Jesus had to come in and twist it. So that's why they were mad at him because he came and felt like you're coming and twisting and changing everything around. But all he was doing is saying, look, you guys are teaching traditions of man. I'm coming preaching the word of God mm -hmm. and the commandments of God, and you need to follow God instead of following the Talmud. Remember, they were also coming from the Talmud. Remember, they were teaching from the Talmud, mm -hmm. the Babylonian exactly. Talmud. So they were teaching from the Talmud and also the so-called oral traditions that they said they got down from Mount Sinai, which were all see, lies. Maybe a lot of the people wanted to learn and stuff. They, they were. weren't reading scripture for themselves, so they were just primarily yes. just yes, under were. under under. Uh, under the control of just going by whatever they that's say. That's it. That's yeah. exactly it. Is. But that's why but those like it is now. Look, look, exactly. look, look at the majority of people now. The majority of people just yeah, Jesus to died on Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, he rose early Sunday. He uh, he said we can eat anything we want. We die. We gonna go to heaven. We, all these things are getting from the past, but you can't read any of those things that you said that we can do. Right. None of that stuff we can read is stuff that we were told by what traditions. That's why I said. That's why you you act, like you said the other day. You asked Christians, "Why do they have a Christmas tree?" There you go. They, they have no idea they, why they do it. They don't. But then Jeremiah ten tells you they're brutish. That means they lack reasonable common sense. They don't know why they do it. Or they just do it. So that's why. But when God says, like, so when you read Jeremiah ten about putting a Christmas tree in your house, you don't want to do. Because remember, they did that five hundred, five hundred some years before Christ even came. Wow. So how could that? That's why I said when, when, when my cousin said that foolish, she's talking about, well, I bring them in because, you know, Jesus is the tree of life. So that's why I bring in the Christmas tree in on. I was like, man, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Now, now you're being Now you're lying. Now you're lying. Yes, exactly. Yeah, now, you're now you're lying. lying. Exactly. Really? You're lying. Now you're lying. You're yeah. Stuff to, 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 uh, you're making up something real quick. It was real quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was real quick. Like, come on, bro. Like, don't do that. But, yeah, Acts 1, 6 through 12. Go ahead. When they were, when they, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, "Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the king kingdom of Israel?" Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, "It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in His own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea." and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Uh -huh. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward the heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus, the same which, who? The same Jesus okay. which is taken up from you in, into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Mm -hmm. They returned, then returned they into Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Right, amen. So now let's go ahead and go to Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14, let me read 1 through 9. Because he said, this same Jesus that you see that's going up, on, remember, they're on Mount Olives now. He said, likewise, you're going to see him return. Mm -hmm. You're going to see the way you see up, you're going to also return there. And that ain't the rapture. <laughs> it's not the rapture <laughs> at all. <laughs> well, it says caught up. Rapture means to be caught up. And stop it. Let's go to Zechariah 14, 1 through 9. Zechariah 14. 1 through 9. When you get there, go ahead. 
Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. The day of the Lord cometh. Go ahead. And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountain, for the valley of the mountain shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before in the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light, and it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem. Now what is the living waters that go out for to Jerusalem? This is word. Just the word of God. It's exactly. The word of God. Yeah, yeah, the word of God also. Yeah, exactly. Because um, Isaiah 2, Isaiah 2 and 3. And many shall go and say, Come, come ye, let us go into the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word from Jerusalem. So right, the living waters is the word of God. Exactly. Yeah. Go ahead. Half of them towards the pharmacy, and half of them toward the hinder mm -hmm. In um, summer and in winter shall it be. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall be king. Over the over all the earth, in that day shall there be one Lord in His name. One. Right. So we see that this could be one Lord and King, right? Well, who is this one Lord and that one King? That's Jesus. Jesus it's telling you clearly, right? Let's go to Acts, Acts seventeen. Acts seventeen one through three. Acts 17, 1 through 3. Acts 17, 1 through 3. When you get there, go ahead. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis mm -hmm. and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And Paul, as his manner was, went in, in unto them, and three Sabbath days reason with them out of the scripture. Doing what? Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. And that his that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Right. So he's telling you so but he was going through the scriptures though. He was searching the scriptures from Genesis to Malachi to let them know it was talking about Christ. Christ remember, yeah. they didn't have the New Testament then. Right. So he was letting them know that he was teaching Christ. That the Messiah had already and, come. Amen. I'm going to another witness right here. Let's go to uh, 28. Acts 28. So they've been having this debate ever since. There you go. There you go. Amen. Exactly. And the ones, that's why I say, that's why I say the ones that have ears to understand, God's given us understanding to know, you know, that's, that is clearly talking about Christ. Amen. Acts 28, 23 to 27. Acts 28, 23 to 27. Go ahead, watch this. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses mm. and out of the prophets from morning till evening. So he was teaching Jesus out of the law of Moses and of the prophets, letting them know that that it was now from what? Morning till evening. That was a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's about 12 plus hours or so, but go ahead. And some believed the things which were spoken, mm -hmm. and some believed not. Mm -hmm. 
And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Esaias, the prophet, unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross, mm -hmm. and their eyes are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they and their eyes have they closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. So he's telling Israel, he was telling Israel, a lot of Israelites didn't want to receive it. Mm -hmm. Now watch what he's going to say about the Gentiles. Read, read 28. But watch them though. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, so like wow. said, so he said, look, he was Sent to, matter, matter of fact, he even says the same thing. It was like a, uh, Acts 13. Acts 13, like 40, 40, um, right. Acts 13 and 46 says, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should have first been spoken to you. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For hath the Lord that commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light unto the Gentiles, that thou should be salvation unto the ends of the world, uh, into the earth. So the Gentiles were glad when they heard this, and they glorified the word of the Lord. But he was saying, like, he was going to Israelites. Israelites didn't want to believe. They're like, nope, I don't believe it. Nope. Um, you, I know you're trying to preach Jesus out of the scriptures. We don't want to see it. We don't want to believe it. And they don't want to hear it. He said, my people, that's why he prophesied Isaiah. That's why he said, um... He quoted Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, when he said, The Holy Ghost by Isaiah, the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and with their ears. Their, he said, and Hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, it should be converted, and that I should heal them. But see, Israel didn't want to, like a lot of Israelites didn't want to receive it, but he was... He's like, he's like, look, like he he came for us, you know. What I'm saying? But y'all don't even want to see it. But now, all right, if you don't want to hear, I'm gonna go to these Gentiles, and these Gentiles gonna hear it. But go ahead, though. It's it's just amazing what you're saying there is that that's why God and stuff he he refers to Israel as a stiff neck, yes, like stiff rebellious, neck and a rebellious yes. generation. There you go. Stuff. Because I mean, it's just it, I mean, I I would imagine, you know. God, he, he's omniscient and he knows what he's doing and he mm -hmm. had, everything he does is for a purpose. Because sometimes it makes you wonder, had the Gentiles had his law, statutes, and commandments and stuff? Mm -hmm. Because it looked as though like they were willing to accept mm -hmm. it. Yeah, they, yeah. they got tired of worshiping all, those, all of those yeah. idols and all that kind of stuff like that. Yeah, so it was point. refreshing to hear and stuff about... Yeah. A loving God, a, a a God that was, you know, that was that was, that loved it, loved the people and stuff. Amen. And then, the, then what gets me? The children of Israel had the history. The world yes. knew. The, the people used to be saying, "Yo, God, God fights fight for, for you. you." All that, and, and all of that, and they still them. rebel. So, so crazy. is this the reason why um, our people think that they're Gentiles? Well, they think they're Gentile because of you know because they think the people of the land are are, are Jews. That's why. So if they if you if the right. whole world is saying that they're the Jews, Jews in the land, you must they, be a Gentile, yeah. right? So that's what I'm saying, like, and it says so the Gentiles will accept it. So if they're you know they have to come into the covenant and worship God, mm -hmm. so then they're saying that um, they then they're that the the Gentiles will accept it. So then they're accepting it. Right. Yes. Yeah, some are. Well, remember this this is back then though. Now you got to remember about the fourth beast, which the Roman Catholic Church. They came in and they polluted, they polluted everything. Now. Right, but, that's what I'm saying. They did. But but, but yeah. prior to that, when Paul was preaching to these Gentiles and all that, when they were serving other guys, they would leave their customs, stop doing that, and then they would start following God. Now, you know what I'm saying, like that. But like you say, but when Rome got a hold of it, everything started kind of messing up. So now a lot of Gentiles were. Remember, like I said, Pope Gregory was adding paganism into the church. So exactly. now they're like, look, oh yeah, you can still come. Um, coming to the covenant of Israel, but you can still bring all your paganism that you were also doing. So now that, oh, I can, we can still do that. He allowed that, but that was a Gentile. Pope Gregory allowed that. The apostles would have never allowed that. But remember, the apostles died off before 70 AD. So when they died off in the church, that's why I said the church left Rome. They said at 135 AD, and, or, and left Jerusalem, and then went to Rome. Come on, man. 
So that's that's how you know. But the Gentiles before though, before this, they were they were believing because they had the true word of God and they were being taught by real Israelites. Keeping it up, but then after that, when they all died off, then that's when paganism came. It's in. just amazing and stuff though how people and stuff don't really take the word of God at at its face value because like the Roman Catholic Church. They're not, they, they're, they're not throwing rocks and hiding their hand. They, they, tell, they tell you straight you, out, we hey, we changed yes. the Sabbath to Sunday. I'm the vicar of Christ. I run I'm it down here. Christ. I'm running it. In the, <laughs> I'm in the rest of the world. Oh, 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 okay, okay. I'm the holy father. Yeah, see. <laughs> call no man father. But no, to call me and holy you're father. you're going to be held accountable for that. Yes, sir, y'all. You can't sit up there and say that. Day. Everybody G was doing it. It was universal. No. Matthew 23. Jesus. That's why the word of God says and stuff that you were counted among the elect. elect. You can see. That's what you had just read earlier about Full seeing and, and, and not seeing. Yes, yeah, seeing and not God. understand. I mean, mm -hmm. hearing and right. not understanding. Mm -hmm. Seeing and can't see it. Hearing it and you're not understanding it. It's just like you got blind. I mean, it's like I said, you yeah. got blind. I thank God that you under, that we understand. They don't know that. The Pope, you, they address they don't know that. Holy Father now. And the I mean, they don't know that. About the Holy yeah, Father. but are they reading the Bible, though? That's it. Yeah. And if they are reading, are they reading with understanding? That's the thing about it. Because people say, people call these Edomites rabbis all the time. And Christ said, don't call anyone rabbi, for I'm your master. Mm -hmm. And you go, well, is rabbi this, rabbi that. Whoa, rabbi who? And they call him some father. You know, yeah, you ain't supposed to be doing that. No. And see, what the thing about it, people got to really come to a point where they really come to know Christ for themselves. Yes. Because the word of God says, he said, he said, though I stand at the door and knock it, Amen. you open up, I'll come in. There you go. You don't Amen. have to, you don't have to be listening to these false teachers. Get to know them for yourself. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he will teach you. Yes, he will. His spirit will lead you yeah, into he'll all lead truth. You to all truth. Yes, he will. Mm -hmm. The word of God will. 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28. But like I said, there's some Gentiles now, though, like I said, that, that are also harking because it's, it's quite a few Gentiles that, that, that left. Like I said, I was telling you about that, that Israelite, I mean, that Gentile uh, pastor in Tennessee had a congregation of like 12,000. And, and, and he started realizing that, you know what, we're not supposed to be keeping these things. So it went from 12,000 down to 30. He lost 30 his, people? Yeah, he lost his church and everything. He said he lost everything. And he had to go to his house. And then at his house, he went to a small thing. But the point was... He said it went from 12,000 all the way down to 30 because they all left. And he's a Gentile. They're Gentile, but, but the few did stay because he realized, like, look, huh, what we're teaching is contrary to the word of God. Now, you'll have some Israelites, well, it don't matter if those doing Gentiles doing that. They still go to the fire. Oh, no, still, that's the most. That's the that's, 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 that's You know what it is? What it is that, that who, whoever that Gentile <laughs> pastor was. He has a true love yes, he for does. God. Yes, that's why. And, and the Amen. word of God convicted him. Yes, he and he did. said, he said, Lord. 12,000. You know what? He was standing there like saying, Lord, Lord, though you slay me, yet will I, I serve trust you. you. Yeah, because see, a lot of people be that I, I can't fathom the thought, man, of not having all of my, all of this. He did it. All this that I work for. Yeah. Got all these followers. No, because God said that the church the belongs to him anyway. It's a good thing, man. He's been pastor for 17 years. Yeah, but wow. like I said, but then, like I said, because another pastor showed him. Oh. About that. And then he started realizing, he was really like, whoa. He started going, he said, look. He said he gave his church a month to say, look, we're, we're no longer going to um, be doing on Sunday. We're going to be um, keeping the um, the Sabbath. We're going to be doing God's feast days. We're going to be doing his dietary. All that stuff. We're no longer going to be doing Christmas carols and all that kind of stuff in the church. They said by the time, he said they went from 12,000 to 30. Well, I'm going to go to my football game on Saturday. <laughs> I'm going to see the Bulldogs. <laughs> you know, we witches up here, shoot. We're going to be celebrating Halloween. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, my children, I don't Right, because right, right, Halloween is a, is a holy day for the witches, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, they call it my Spider-Man. Well, well, a high day. It ain't a holy day. It's a, it's a, it's a it isn't it? Day. Amen, yeah. And isn't it amazing? They said that, that on Halloween, they said that's one of the biggest revenue, I mean, one of the biggest holidays. Yeah, behind Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, right behind Christmas. Yes. People get caught up yeah, in that do. because... They and what they don't even realize is devil worship. Do you see all these stores now, these big warehouse? Now they're yeah. opening them up now because, like, now they're selling all this Halloween stuff. They be closed all year, and all of a sudden you see they these big old. Now they pop up Halloween. all over. Yeah, Halloween. That's, That's where all the merchants are getting rich off this, yeah. 1 Corinthians 15, 24 through 28. 1 Corinthians 15, 24 through 28. Go ahead. Then come at the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, mm -hmm. even the Father. Even the Father. So, okay, go ahead. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Uh-huh. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. 
The mm-hmm. last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Mm-hmm. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected, which did put all things under him. Mm-hmm. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Amen. Amen. Right, we're going to see that right here. Last one, Revelation 22, 1 through 5. Revelation 22, 1 through 5. Can you get there? Go ahead. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Mm-hmm. And let's see, in the midst of the street of it, and of either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. Mm-hmm. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. Mm. And his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face. We're going to finally get to see the Father's face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And his name shall be in their foreheads, mm. and there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So this is so like it says, so from Genesis to Revelation, we've been dealing with the Son, which is Jesus. Remember in the Old Testament, his name was Jehovah. He came in his Father's name, which was Jesus in the New Testament. Now, after he said everything was done, he conquered death. He said now he, he's also going to be in subject to his Father. The Father going to come down with the New Jerusalem. It will be the very first time we get to see and hear the voice of the Father the very first time, and we'll get to rule and reign with him forever. So, hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.